Hello and welcome to another modern stream. Um, we're going to be playing today some Harlan Scales. Uh, this is actually a very, very sweet, sweet deck and uh, a deck that I'm, I am personally a big fan of. It's extremely hard to play though, so please bear with me as I play through this league. A um, couple of leagues, actually. Um, however, the deck is actually super sweet. For those of you that are not aware of, this is a deck based around the card Harden Scales. Uh, this card gets super, super charged when you combine it with cards such as Arbine Ravager, Steel Overseer, Animation Module, and even some <laughs> some old stars like Archibald Worker, <laughs> which is kind of cute, and a Metallic Mimic. Um, of course, uh, the the big uh, the big heavy hitters that this deck has are Walking Ballista, which can very often, thanks to Archibald Ravager, just kill out of nowhere, and Hangerback Walker, which is kind of like a grind machine, and it starts growing, and then finally it you can crack it with Archibald Ravager and get a bunch of one one flyers. Um, the new addition for Modern Horizons is Scrapyard Recombiner, uh, which uh, has Modular, which is the same ability that Arcbound has. Uh, but when you sack an artifact, which it can sack itself as well, obviously, but it can sacrifice uh, redundant Mox Opals, Welding Jars, even Arcbound Workers uh, to move counters around. And then it allows you to, to, f uh, to fetch a Construct. Uh, now, Constructs in this list include Walking Ballista, Hangar Bag Walker, Steel Overseer, Archivant Worker, and unfortunately not Archivant Ravager, since it's a beast, which is like the most confusing thing ever, but yeah, like <laughs> for whatever reason, Ravager is actually a beast. Um, Metallic Mimic also is a shapeshifter, which is unfortunate, but I mean, with Hangar Bag Walker and Ballista, you, we probably have enough, you know? These are the ones that you're going to be fetching for uh, the, the most often. Also, if you have a hangar bug walker and you play a scrap uh, scrapyard recombiner, that's that's a name for sure. Um, you can sack your ravager, you can crack it, and then you can sack the tokens that you get from the walker. So basically, you can kind of go infinite getting hangar bug walkers, and then each hangar bug walker turns into more thopters and more hangar bug walkers. It's kind of sweet. Um, one very important card, you're going to see that we're playing four copies of Ink Moth Nexus and one copy of Blink Moth Nexus. And the reason for this is that, you know, counting to 10 is much easier than counting to 20. And you very often just have uh, you just have um, Ink Moth Nexus infect kills out of nowhere thanks to Warpound Ravager. Just dropping a bunch of counters into, into an Ink Moth and just uh, basically uh, killing on a single attack. Um... Land of War Reborn is kind of like a weird land. It's an ETV tap land, which makes sense since uh, we don't have that many turn one plays in this in this list. Usually, the the, the heavy hitters in the deck become uh, start showing up uh, on turn two, um, but um, it allows you to get counters. Uh, one very cute interaction actually with Land of War Reborn is with Animation Module, uh, because the card uh, the land enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter it actually does trigger the animation module. So you can pay one and you can get a free servo, uh, which is kind of like a cute interaction there. Uh, then we have a couple of Nurturing Peatlands. In the past, this uh, this deck played Horizon Canopy, but Nurturing Peatland is a strict upgrade because of the sideboard dismembers. Sometimes you can uh, you can just like take one less damage. And uh, one of Pendlehaven, which can, uh, which can grow your 1-1s into 1-2s. Uh, we have a bunch of basic forests and in four actually still allows because of all the uh, ravager slash recombiner slash uh, steering uh, synergies or whatever. I guess it, it's not really a steering synergy because steering can also find forests, but whatever. Uh, Mox Opal, there we go. That that's a synergy right there. Uh, but yeah, so that's uh, that's what the the main deck is going to look like in a quick in a quick little uh, deck deck. Uh, the sideboard has removal spell against decks like humans or like shadow with gormaganglers and stuff. Um, that's where these numbers are going to shine. Uh, Veil of Summer against discard slash control decks. Nature's Claim because Stony Silence is effectively unbeatable for us. And I guess Karn as well, but this doesn't answer Karn, unfortunately. Uh, Karn Sign of Ursa as our grindy engine card. Uh, basically a planeswalker that can uh, help accrue value every turn. Uh, Damping Sphere against your amulets, your uh, trons, your 
storms, and that's about it. And finally, Graph Digger's Cage against Graveyard Strategies, and I guess also Storm and stuff. Uh, so yep, that's pretty much what the deck is. We're gonna fire up a Modern League. And no, not Crab Vine. Gonna do Hardened Scales. So many amulet decks. Come on, Moto. There we go, Hardened Scales. Submit. And let's fire it up. Um, this list is one that uh, Cyrus Cormongill, if you don't know Cyrus, Cyrus in CG on, um, on Twitter. Uh, and he sometimes streams, so I think he's also Cyrus CG on, on Twitch as well. Um, he played it to a 17th place finish at the Modern Challenge this past weekend. And he told me that the list was actually given to him by Yama Killer, which you very likely know Yama Killer, which is basically literally the only other modern streamer besides me that's left on Twitch. Um, so you probably and hopefully know him. Um, this time is kind of awkward. Wait, is it? No, it's, this ad is not awkward actually. So we get to turn one double Archman Worker, turn two Mimic, naming Construct, and I guess we play a list on a Walker. Okay, yeah, okay. I mean, I'm into it. This hand is potentially terrible against some decks. I'm gonna see how it goes. Hey Scott, how you doing? An elf kid, dude. How's it going? Welcome both of you to the stream. Also, I have M15 lands. I just noticed that. That's gross. I'm gonna cast Mox Opal. Can play another one of these dudes. Pass the turn. Polluted Delta. Rixis Shadow, yep. Classic. <laughs> uh, I guess that they, they might have drawn the bubble off the Street Wraith. That's the only the only reason for that's the only way that my opponent's sequencing is proper right there. Um It is actually quite risky to... I feel like I do want to attack. Uh, but it's actually quite risky to play the Mimic here, so I think I'm just going to play the Hunger back for one, so it doesn't get Discard spelled. It's probably going to get pushed, but that's probably fine. But in this kind of matchup, I really want to pressure my opponent and try to, you know... But I don't, yeah, I don't think I, I could have played the Mimic and then try to go for it, because if my opponent just pushes the Mimic, then I get super blown out, so. Um, all right, that was easy. Uh, we want Veil of Summers here for sure. Kind of like Amulet Math, I'll give it a pass today. <laughs> yeah, th there's definitely a lot of math uh, happening in this, uh, with, with this deck, for sure. A lot of, like, sequencing and stuff like that. Um, it's it's certainly very very interesting. I don't think I want Karn Cyan of Forza. Maybe I do. I feel like I don't because just like getting it just gets blown out by Stub. But maybe just maybe it's like my opponent will side out their Stubs against me. Seems risque though. Definitely want jars, definitely want opals. Man, all my cards are just great. Maybe I don't I just don't want these members. Killing Angler seems pretty important. Also, I just noticed that we're playing against Rixie Shadow. Like, we played against Shadow 
six times yesterday. Like, what the hell is going on in Magic Online right now? The amount of shadow is just absurd. I feel like I'm just gonna take out the Mimics. Just the one Karn. Or eh, the one of this member, I guess. We're totally gonna draw that one of this member in the clutchest of moments. Uh, I don't think I can keep this hand. It's nice, but... Like, I really need to draw land, and I have like one turn, two turns, I guess, to draw land. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna mulligan this. Wow. We have not seen a non one lander so far. Finally, that's a non one lander. All right, so we're gonna keep here. Definitely gonna bottom dot on the Mox Opal. And I guess I'm gonna bottom the Peatland. Just hope that this somehow works out. I'm not gonna say it's very likely that I will, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't think yeah, we're very likely to win this one. Motobug. Give me that Motobug. Motobug? Ugh. Yeah, this is not looking good. Our mold to five. Our mold to five is not working out. Surprise, surprise. They'll probably take the Ravager here. Hmm, they don't. No second land for my opponent. Okay. It's not bad actually. So if we find a one drop here, we might actually be in a good spot. I'm definitely not playing this Ravager until I have. Oh yeah, this is like the nuttiest of draws. Um, I guess that is actually proper to do this. That's an amazing draw. Such a good draw. Muldirk DK, thank you so much for that Twitch Prime Trap. Welcome back for the fifth month in a row. Thank you so much for the continued support. Um, can I graft here? Yeah, my opponent's not going to let me. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I guess we just need to let this resolve. We get two 1-1s. One I don't think... No, I don't think I'm going to. Well, I guess our move to 5 did get there somehow. It only took my opponent never seeing a second land. Easy. Easy. 100% win rate, no big deal. Yeah, this deck is pretty sweet. <laughs> Big fan of this deck. This is one of my favorite decks that I have... I literally never played a league with this deck. And I only played one FNM where I went 3-1. and one. And the, only, the match that I lost was against Merfolk. Where I played game 1. And I'm like, wow, this, like, this matchup is completely unlosable. Like... This is so easy. And then games two and three, my opponent drew uh, one Hercules recall on each game. And I'm like, oh, oh, I guess that this matchup is actually unwinnable. Cool. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, this hand looks great. Um, do we scale? I think we scale on one. 
We kind of really need to hit a land, but... Burn. Oh. Shift? Skip shift? Oh. What? Soul Scar Mage. Okay. Alright, we need to find a land here. Dark Steel Citadel, I guess. Pretty bad that we whiffed there, obviously. Not not thrilled about about whiffing, but this where it is. Light up the stage. Stage has indeed been lit up. I don't think I play around Gutshot here. I'm gonna name Construct. I'm gonna cast this for zero. I'm gonna cast this for zero. Now the question is, do I kill one of these dudes? With my Ballista. I feel like I... Ugh. I feel like I do. I, yeah, I guess that they don't have gut shot. Otherwise, they would have they would have used it already. Though I guess if I were if I was going to do this, then I should have done that on my turn. But yeah, like that that was going to be a little bit too much damage. I think. Labadar the mimic. All right. Not bad. So basically, my opponent is going to have an art here. So the question is do I want to play the recombiner? I feel like I do want to play the recombiner here. It's not going to grow the walker for this turn. But I think that's okay. My opponent's so good at drawing metamorphose. <clears throat> Yeah, also Soul Scar Mage lines up so well against my plus one plus one synergy dudes. Don't have a bolt. Have a lot of okay, so no no land. Okay. So no bolt in hand then. I mean I'm I'm snap blocking here. Yes. Wow, that resolved? What is my opponent's hand? Ugh. So the world in jar doesn't really do anything. World in jar doesn't do anything. If I get Lanoa reborn and I play Overseer.
Now I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play in get Nexus and I'm gonna play the Overseer. And then I'm gonna hold up Hanger by Walker activation. That is gonna force the Labadart in the Overseer. I guess it's better to get Worker, actually. Yeah, so I just get Worker. Yeah, I'm gonna get Worker and hold up, hold up um, Hanger Back activation. Because this is a 2 2 instead of a 1 1. It also continues growing my Hanger Back. My opponent has been drawing pretty well. Okay. Third light at the stage. Oh no, okay. Love a spike. Okay, it's possible that I'm just dead here. Yep. Things not looking great. <laughs> they drew the four the soul scar mage, that's funny. Ugh. Yeah, I guess I gotta play this dude. <clears throat> yeah, th this overseer is being super awkward here in my hand. Super, super awkward. Another Reveler. <laughs> they draw lands. What is this stomping ground for? Revelry of the sideboard, maybe? Oh, this is just lethal now. Doesn't the damage just... Yeah, this is just lethal. Because they're going to, they're gonna sack land to level dart me and then trigger prowess. All right. Yeah, I definitely want to get all of these X ones. Just want to get them out of my deck immediately. Um, so these three dudes come out, and I guess I bring in these members. Potentially nature's claim to claim my own things. Meh. Love the new content. This deck is what I play when people don't want me to play. <laughs> nice monsters. <laughs> yeah, this deck is freaking sweet. I love it. Big, big fan of this deck. Yeah, I wonder if I should have some claims in my deck just to claim my own thing. Because I know that we do this against Berm. We we do bring in nature nature's claim against burn, but I wonder whether we should be doing that against uh, prowess as well. Like for example, I would not be bringing in these members against burn. Welding is awful against soul scar. Maybe something like this. Uh, so one thing that you have to remember about welding jar is like it, it's very very important in order to. Um, in order to enable your Mox Opal and stuff. So you you like you never want to cut all four welding jars, especially in a, in a quick matchup. Mr. Moy with a Twitch from Sub, welcome to the Primetime Stronghold. Thank you for the support. Enjoy your emotes. And join the Discord if you want to access uh, the sideboard guide. So yeah, as I was saying, you never want to side out like way too many Welling Jars because it's important in a matchup like this, it's important to like make sure that Mox Opal is active because it's one of the ways that we get ahead. So I, I think I'm going to do something like this and see what happens. I kind of just really want to get the X1s out of my deck. <clears throat> so 
So turn one peatland module. Turn two worker scales. And then we have a list. Okay. Module can do can do some work here. Do I have to do something for sub in Discord? Um, oh yeah, you you link you need to link your your accounts. But if you if you have if that is done already, then you should be good. Uh, Land War Reborn doesn't really change. I guess it does change something. Yeah, because I can I can get a free one one. So this is the interaction that I was talking about earlier, and now this artifact enables. I'm not going to graft here. This artifact enables Mox Opal. So now I can I can scale here. I wonder if this is for like Destructive Reverie or something. Wow, my opponent is so good at drawing their Metamorphosis. Yeah, it, it does take a couple of hours to update. Uh, up to a couple of hours. This is this is the most annoying thing. Like uh, Land of War Reborn actually triggers off literally every creature entering the battlefield, so it will also trigger off. Okay, I'm fine with that. Nice. So we're gonna play Arcbound Worker. It's going to trigger module, which we are going to pay one mana for. <clears throat> and we're not going to graft into this. We might graft into this, though. That will trigger module again. I feel like, yeah, I actually, I actually kind of like this. So we graft here. We pay one for module. And now we have a 4-4. Four, four. Next turn we can play Ballista. We're holding up Nature's Claim. If my opponent kills the worker, I can put the counter on another on one of the servos and make another servo. Yeah, I can I can claim my own worker if I want to. <clears throat> Yeah, opponent can't attack now. Sweet. Recombiner. Let's think here. So here we can animation module to put a counter on the worker and make more servos if we want to. <clears throat> we can play Recombiner. We can start attacking too. Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna play either a recombiner. And I'm gonna hold up claim here, and I'm not going to to activate a module now. We can always activate module if my opponent uh, kills my recombiner, or we can claim my recombiner instead. Like we have a bunch of options here. A braid. Okay. What counters there? And here, I actually kind of like to create a... Yeah, here I'm actually going to make a servo. It is not particularly likely for my opponent to be able to, to kill me from here, and making sure that I can, that I can block seems important. A brave, my servo. Okay. So 
So I can take maximum 6 damage here. Seems good. Rolling Jar is not awful. Ballista for one. Pay one, make another servo. And we can attack with the worker. Do we assume that my opponent has nothing here? Because my opponent's at nine. I can... I have two counters plus five, so that's seven. Okay, so I don't have lethal yet. Even I, I guess I didn't consider this earlier, but even if I attack with the servo, I, I would have been one damage off. So I think I just let this... I just wait here. No, apparently, um, like this happened multiple times. Like my opponent had Soul Scar Mage in play, and this happened multiple times the previous game. Reveler. Okay, so now my opponent's actually dead, and I think I do it right now to play around Gut Shot. So I claim my own worker. Put five counters here. And I ping my opponent to death. Look at the style points here. Look at look at the style points right there, huh? Just winning in style. <sighs> Anything else? What was the interaction you were saying with Soul Scar? Um, basically, like it happened multiple times in game one. Like my opponent bolted my my uh, crap yard, and it still triggered modular. I assumed that it was not gonna work, but it did. So I am I have no idea why. Like it it could be like a bug, even honestly. I am honestly not sure. I like I assumed that I was not gonna get counters. I don't know. I'm not sure, honestly. Uh, I think I'm gonna do the same thing. Sounds like a bug. Yeah, it, it, it could very easily be, honestly. <laughs> it could very easily just be a bug. Um, okay, I'm gonna keep this hand. We got Welding Jar, we got Animation Module, and Multiple Ravagers, which is our best card in every single matchup. Uh, I guess the best thing that we can probably draw would be... Scales. Well, wow, they keep getting stomping ground. That is a great sign for me. Um, so we're going to play Jar. And I guess I'd rather play the worker here. Well, do I? No, so if I play animation module, yeah, so I'm gonna play module here because next turn I can play worker plus make a, make a servo. And if I draw something on the following turn, then I can ravager plus servo. So I think that getting the module here, it's actually gonna be quite powerful. I just want to get the the module the the module engine going and start spitting out free one ones. Seems like a good move. My opponent's hand is very awkward here, apparently. Yeah, I'm definitely regenerating this. Yes. Start speeding out free one once every turn. Sounds like a good deal. Another god shadow here. Oh yeah. I'm not gonna block here. Uh, actually, yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna throw a one one under the bus. I don't want my opponent to uh, to be able to light up the stage.
Nice. Uh, yeah. And now everything that we sack just feeds the Ravager, which is great. Yeah, look, look at that. Look at that tempo play. Look at that tempo play from last turn. Just by not taking the damage, we basically time walk to my opponent. This is no Titan shame on your bullets fly. I mean, like what I've said multiple times already, like, I don't think anybody ever can tell me that I don't put out enough <laughs> enough amulet content. So I think that trying to, you know, since nobody's streaming modern anymore, trying to diversify the content that I produce uh, just makes sense. It also, it's it's nice that it's a little bit fresh for me. Um, like the, the fact that I'm playing, you know, I'm, I'm still playing sweet decks. It's not like I'm playing like boggles right i don't think i would stream in boggles league because it would be too boring unless unless somebody don't donate for it or something i i would not willingly stream a boggles league um so hmm yeah yeah i i know i know that you're that you're joking uh i could I guess I want a Steerings. And then I can play Worker plus make Servo. At this point, I just feel like I want the max amount of lands possible because I'm going to start getting free Servos and my Ravager is going to start growing out of proportion very, very quickly. So I just want to have like the max amount of lands possible, basically. And I'm not going to start attacking this turn because it's going to force me to do stuff on my turn right now, which I don't want to, kind of. Uh, but I'm definitely going to start attacking next turn with the Ravager. And then I'm going to play a second Ravager, which is going to be a nice little insurance policy. Um, I'm going to sack here. All right, so I'm going to sack this. Put a counter there. Yes. It's going to make a 1-1. One, one. Also, we're still we're still chilling at twenty life here. <clears throat> so my opponent's gonna need multiple dudes and definitely some crash through action in order to to get anything done. You should play mill. I would never play mill. <laughs> I hate that deck with a passion. I don't think it's fun. Like, I, I would much rather play Burn than Mill for sure. Like, Burn seems much more interesting to me than Mill. Alright, so they have a Reveler. They did not play the Soul Scar Mage. Interesting. Oh, you 5 0 today, Dido? Nice. Yeah, I had to I had to leave because I needed to like get get the stream set up and everything, but just gonna throw some blockers in there. Grow the Ravager. Now it's bigger. Yeah, unless my opponent finds an abrade like right now. This Ravager is getting out of hand really, really quickly. And in fact, I have lethal here. Okay, so can I have lethal through a Lightning Bolt? I think I do, right? Yeah, I guess I can play a second Ravager. Yeah, so we have lethal here. So, make Servo. They do have Labadart, though. So do I have Lethal through Labadart and Lightning Bolt, considering that my opponent has a Soul Scar Mage here? So, I activate Ink Moth. I attack. I sack Worker to this Ravager. 
I put the counter from the Arcan Worker on the Inky. My opponent Lava Darts. I sack this Ravager to this Ravager. I put the two counters from here into the Ink Moth. Um, that is going to be met with a Lightning Bolt. I'm, I'm trying to figure out like the worst case scenario, like, which is my opponent has a Lightning Bolt and they have this Lava Dart. So that's going to be one, two, three. Man, this math is hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I am, I am planning on putting the, this modular into the ink moth, but I'm trying to see if I like get all my value. So this is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I think I don't have lethal because of the soul scar mage because he's gonna take the counters out of the ink moth is that right so um there's no harder scales in place so i attack i sack i put the counters here that's one two this ravager is gonna have two counters so that's three three um Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I think I am one short if my opponent has a lightning bolt. I know, Lucas. I know that I have lethal, but my opponent has a soul scar mage. So if they have. I know that I have lethal, but if they have a lightning bolt in hand, I actually lose. Because they can they can lava dart uh, the ink moth. So I can I can play through the removal spells, but I cannot I cannot kill my opponent on a single hit. That is the issue, and that's what I'm trying to figure out if I can play through. Cause alternatively what I can do is I can start growing these ravagers with this animation module and just making tokens for free. So the question is, do I want to play around Lightning Bolt or not? I feel like I can play around Lightning Bolt if I want to. And then I can present lethal next turn. Now the question is, is it good for me? Because if my opponent has a crash through, then I'm actually in trouble because I'm I'm probably going to be... Fa it, it's, it's possible that with all this mana that I might be facing lethal next turn. If they are able to crash through. I think I'm going to pass the turn though. No, no, that's, yeah, so I think I just take it easy, and I just pass the turn, and I just make more tokens and grow the Ravagers, and next turn I can attack through for lethal. Easily, basically. So the question is, does my opponent has a have, have a crash through? That feels like the only way that I can lose this game. They do. Okay. That's what they needed. <laughs> yeah, my opponent had the nuts here. This is the absolute best possible case scenario for them. Please cycle. Nice.
So if they have lightning bolt, I lose. So 6, 10, 14, 18. So I need to throw some stuff under the bus. So we're going to block here. I'm going to block here. Six. I guess that I can put this Ravager in front of the Reveler. They have the Lightning Bolt. Another level dart. That's so much better for them. So this is just lethal. 6, 12. Yeah, this is actually lethal. So I should have blocked with more stuff. Should have not been a coward. <laughs> uh. Seven fourteen twenty one. Yep. All right, my opponent had the perfect the perfect uh, combination. They needed to have they needed to have the crusher, and they also needed to have the metamorphos to trigger the dudes, and they needed to have the swift sphere. Like, if any of those things don't don't happen, we win that game. It was definitely a close one. I think it was correct for me to for me to play around that lightning bolt. Like again, like my opponent needed so many things to go right to win that game. I was I was at twenty, right? That's why I didn't go for it. But if my opponent had not had any any one of the cards that they did have, that they needed to have, then I, I think that we easily win. Uh we have the namesake, so we're gonna keep this in. Uh oh. We're in trouble. We're in trouble, guys. OP with the good deck choice. Okay, no second amulet at least. Well, maybe they, maybe they do have a second amulet. We're going to see. All right, first time ever playing the matchup. Feels weird to be on the other side. Feels, feels pretty strange to be on the other side of this. All right, that's a whiff. Good for me. Uh oh, bad for me. How do I win this game? Well, first of all, my point is to not have it. That's step number one. I guess I, I play the ballista because it allows me to interact with an Susa or Scout. <sighs> Not looking good here, though. Also, like, what the hell is this forest art? Opponent, have, have respect for the game. Uh, my opponent just has it. The, the good thing about being not playing Amulet and like being playing against it is that I can finally auto yield to all these triggers. That is nice. 
being able to finally auto yield to triggers is it's kind of cool. All right, we got a Titan auto yield. Yes. Wrong frame, Titan. <laughs> Auto yield to triggers. Uh oh, somebody ordered their, ordered their triggers wrong. Yikers. Yep. So now they don't have lethal, so that's something. Yield to all of them. Feels good, man. All right, so they have a forest in hand and a semi-growth chamber in hand. Let's see what they do here. Because if I steer into a Ravager, can I, I think I can present lethal next turn. One, two from the Ravager, four, six. No, I can't present lethal. Unless I draw a Mox Opal. So if I draw a Mox Opal, then I can, I guess, present lethal. I'm definitely not blocking here. No, there's no need for me to, basically. Yeah, Ravager is the line that saves me. So I'm, I'm just gonna F6 here. I guess technically they could have explosives. And Blade for zero, they don't, okay. <sighs> Steerings. Just drop OP your YouTube link. That's funny. And I'm only doing making the Ballista 7-7 seven seven because it kills the Titan but it also plays around my opponent. Like I know they have a Simic Growth in hand, so they can transmit for explosives on zero. And this also kills um, a potential Titan from my opponent. So that's the reason why I only made the Ballista 7-7 uh, seven, seven, instead of making it bigger. You should do some other two smooth streams. Seems like a new talented player. Uh, maybe, maybe it is. I really dislike the frame in the semi-growth chambers. Big, the opposite of fun of this. Big unfun. All right, so opponent transmutes. Now they don't have second green source, so we cannot get. Uh, we cannot get um, Titan now, which is good for us. Someone respect. I guess they could have an Azusa on another bounce land. But yeah, my opponent is not thinking uh, one turn ahead, which is which is a very common mistake with uh, with new ML players. I mean, like it's it it like, it is kind of like a mind switch that you need to make. Um, I mean, maybe maybe they just have it. I guess. 
Um, yeah, I guess they do have it. Okay, never mind. I do know that they have a forest in hand. They are going to be able to get some... some field tokens. <clears throat> so my opponent's sequencing is a little bit weird. And Unfortunately, I think that I'm going to need to... I feel like I'm going to need to... Um, to kill this Titan before it attacks. Which really sucks for me. Like, puts me in a situation where I really need to... Where I really need to top deck something good again. Why no more amulet stream? I mean, there's always more amulet stream, Asmut. It's just I am I am the only I'm literally the only modern streamer in Twitch right now, so I'm trying to diversify a little bit so that uh, more people can see modern content that's a little bit more diverse instead of being um, being basically only amulet. Yeah, so I feel like we're just a little bit too far behind now. I guess I'm gonna go to the beginning of combat. I'm gonna kill the Titan now. Because now we need both an Inkmoth and a Ravager, and I don't think we're gonna be able to get both. My opponent is going to need to pay for pack next turn, but it's not really going to matter because... Yeah, Redundant World Injura doesn't do it. I guess I might as well make my opponent have it, right? No, they packed it only once. So they're fine. <clears throat> <clears throat> Pretty sure they got us here. If they play properly, obviously, right? But, like, my opponent... Even though their sequencing has been a little bit off, they have been in the end they have been they have been making the correct place basically. Even though their sequencing has been a little bit off, they have been they, they have been making the, the, the correct they have been taking the correct lines basically. Now they have to bounce the Gruel Turf because they messed it up there. They forgot to float mana there. Again, it's not going to matter because they have double amulet and double amulet is silly. Yeah, 
Yeah, like if, if we had an Ink Moth or a Ravager in hand, we would have... I guess if we would need to have an Ink Moth in play in order to have a shot. But even if we did, then my opponent could just get Ghost Squatter. Yeah. We're, we're basically just delaying the unavoidable. All right. We're going to... We're gonna go see to this. I've had enough. I've seen enough. Um, no idea how to sideboard here, but I know that I want this, and I know that I want maybe two of these. I do want Overseer. Probably do want Mimic as well. I feel like I could shave some hunger backs actually. This seems like the worst card. It does enable some some ink moth kills though. I feel like I do need to shave mimics though, because uh, like I'm gonna have so many two drops now and otherwise my curve becomes super clunky. Could also shave an animation module. This is not what the matchup is about. Let's try something like this. I guess I kind of do want, want Welling Jar because of Force and Rex Age and as a way to protect my, my damp spheres. Maybe this. I'm going to go with this. I'm, of course, I'm not sure like at all <laughs> about, about cyberling with this deck, so I'm kind of like winging it, but... Um, Okay. I think I'm actually gonna play Scales and Opal here because maybe that entices my opponent to, if they have Force, just like fire it off. When I kinda want to just protect my Damp Sphere. So they're on castles. <clears throat> yeah, we're definitely playing Damp Sphere here. If they do have the force, it's gonna be like a ridiculous blowout, but just taking my scales and my sphere would be so insane. I told my opponent that they are being streamed. What is this? Another double amulet? <clears throat> yep. There's the damping sphere in play. So, gonna play a recombiner, and on upkeep, I am going to to claim this. They have the force. They don't. All right, sweet.
And now next turn, the Wrecking Binder is going to start. Like, my opponent needs to kill this right now. Otherwise, I'm going to start turning my Mox Opals into threats. Explosives for zero. <laughs> it's it's fine. I don't, I don't see the point for that. Like, to crack my Opal? I am very confused. So we're gonna float mana. Let's float the proper color. Gonna sacrifice Mox Opal. Uh, we could get Overseer. That could be powerful. So we can play Overseer, we can play Opal, and then we can crack Peatland on my opponent's end step. Uh, I guess that we can get Ballista as well, but Ballista gets blown up by the Explosives. We do get to kill the Scout. I'm probably that's a that's a good trade for me probably. Um, Overseer allows me to go off though, so I'm kind of into that. And I guess because of the explosives, I'm not gonna play out the opal yet. My opponent does not have a second land. Wow. This damn sphere is doing it's working overtime. <laughs> yeah, we're playing against Daniel at JSG, which is hilarious. What an irony. What an irony that we are. We're facing the one and only. Yeah, this this damn sphere is doing so much work. They might have sage here. Looks like they do. Oh, play explosives on two. Yeah. All right. So I'm definitely cycling peatland here. That's not a great draw. Arcbound worker. So they can't correct right now, so this like this damp sphere is going to annoy my opponent for at least one more turn. So my goal is gonna be to amass a lethal board state. So that next turn I can present lethal. How do I do that? Uh, of course, this sphere has text that is pertinent to me as well. So I'm not going to be able to play Opal. Crack. And the worker... Hmm. Hate to play versus Samuels. Really enjoy watching you play it. But fun to see play Alex oh, next. Oh, thank you, JSG. I appreciate it. Um. Hmm. I could also psych the damp sphere to the recombiner. I don't think I can percent lethal though, so it, I don't think that's worth it. Well, but my, how can my opponent kill me otherwise though? Right. Is it crazy that maybe the line is for me to sack the damp sphere here? Nah, that's nonsense. I I can only uh, suck, uh, search for a construct. I cannot search for any artifact.
Yeah, it's not that good. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm just gonna... I'm gonna try to go get Ballista here, I think, and play it next turn. But I feel like forcing my opponent's hand here is gonna be important. And I kind of want to attack for 5, actually. No, I, I need I need a card. Yeah, so we're just gonna attack for three. My opponent is probably gonna main face crack these explosives. So then I can go get I guess a walking ballista. I think the five damage is gonna be a miss, maybe. The fact that my opponent can also crack these explosives on two though means that they're gonna blow up the Mox Opal if they want to, and at that point I just don't have fodder to sack to this uh, recombiner though, so I'm I'm kinda not sure. Second list is not bad. feel like I'm definitely going to ping this right now. Four, nine, twelve. Yeah. W with a second ballista in hand, like my opponent can blow up the explosives if they want to, but like this is a ton of damage. At this point, I, I don't think I need a card anymore, and I, I value the 5 damage higher. My opponent is down to 4, and I have a lethal Ballista in play. And I can go fetch a second one, I also have a lethal Blink Moth, yeah. Alright, let's try this again. I'm kind of excited about playing this matchup from the other side, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, maybe I want another claim over the animation module. Yeah, probably on the draw I want to. I want to stop my opponent's uh, amulet draws. All right, cool. Cyborg went through. Um. I mean, I guess it's a solid scales hand. Turn one scales, turn two overseer. Yeah, I'm gonna keep. If my opponent has the nutter butter, nutter butters, then we're like this. This hand does not beat a good amulet hand, but it definitely is a is a good scales hand. So it's going to beat most medium scale hands. Are they holding up spell beers? I think I'm a steering's here. Powers. Too bad that we bought him a welding jar there, but.
Like, they revealed the scout and they did not play it. That is super sketchy. That is super, super sketchy. Like, when I see something like that, I immediately think of uh, Claim. I think of Svelpeers. Most likely Claim than anything else. Because I don't think that I would be bringing in Peers against this deck. Yeah, so I'm going to play Overseer here. Since the Damping Sphere is not really doing anything yet. And I, I don't know what they have, but they probably should, yeah. Hardcast once upon a time. Certainly an interesting one right there. There's the, St the Stacy. Um, so my opponent cannot... They, do, they would need double green source, double untapped land, and one of those needs to be a green source in order to tighten me. So I think I'm going to take one turn off to put a Ravager in play. I guess instead of a Ravager, I'd rather play the Hangerback Walker because um, this diversifies my mana costs uh, in the face of explosives. And I'm going to activate it right now. And if we draw a land next turn, if we draw a land next turn, then we can Ravager plus Fear. I think that the thing that I want to draw the most is actually... Welding Jar, I think. Okay, so they have Ghost Quarter, so... Someone respect for Asusa? Are they gonna reset gemstone? Huh. Okay. Are they gonna reset gemstone here? All right. So I'm definitely playing Damp Sphere now. Well, I guess that I don't have to now. So we start here. Walking Ballista. Yeah, right? So I don't need to play to play Damping Sphere now. I can play Damping Sphere next turn. So I can use this turn to Ballista. And next turn we present Lethal with Ravager. Yeah, so I think that my opponent is getting a little bit carried away here. Yeah, so I think I Ballista now. So I'm going to assume that one of their cards in hand has to be a Titan. So they do have the claim. Looks like it. Oh, dismember. What do they dismember though? Dismember my overseer right now? That is a very, very weird line. Take six. We have lethal next turn.
don't really care about the scout. Okay. Now they ca they can't have a land and an amulet, so I'm not afraid of this. Um, I'm gonna prevent tricks. Ravager. Sounds good. Down to four. <sighs> Do we have to keep this? Like, I am fairly certain that my opponent's card is just a prime time. Pop the hunger back. Pop the Ravager to itself. Pitch to Ballista. All right, sweet. Yeah, because of my opponent packed in for that Asusa on that turn. Yeah, my, my opponent make, made a couple of choices and a couple of uh, plays that I don't agree with at all. Hey, it worked out for us. It worked out for us. Uh, okay. Okay. So I'm. I think I'm going to steering on one. Interesting. This infect. This infect. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna get hunger back here. It allows me to kind of go off next turn. Can mimic and then play two contracts. Constructs. Huh. Just main face staple that rancor in there, huh? It's not bad. Can you imagine if I had a heart and the skills in play? How insane this would be? <laughs> what do you think of Family Titan now in Mordor? I think it's one of the best deck in the format, if not the best deck in the format. That's what I think about it. I think I just ping there right now. My opponent will need to fetch. I basically don't want them to be able to protect their elf with the Pendle Haven. I want them to use an actual spell for it. And I think I do this. So they have a Rancor. But yeah, Man of, Man of Mystery. Um, like, if you would like to check out uh, Amulet content, I have, like, infinite Amulet content in my <laughs> in my channel, in my YouTube channel, so you can, you can check it out there. I streamed it on... When did I stream it? Monday, I think. Two to construct. Hell yeah. Two to construct. Hell yeah. All right. Yeah, it seems that my opponent only had the Glistener Elf as their their um, infector infector threat, and now they are just like really struggling to 
get anything going. So I'm feeling very, very confident about this game. Uh, that's a lighted agent, but it's probably not going to be quick enough. Gonna play a Ravager. Just serve with everything. Like if my opponent wants to block here, yeah, it just doesn't matter. Like we just, we just have lethal, I think. So anything, let's say that this guy gets through. I may put a counter here. That's one, two. Uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I didn't have lethal. All right, I didn't have lethal. My opponent just wanted to concede for whatever reason. One these members. That's it. Hey, so so, how you doing? Welcome to the stream. The classic 2020? Is that what is that what's happening right now? Hell yeah. Uh, actually, I think I want uh, claims because of uh, Spell Skite. And uh, Infect has been playing Force, so maybe I want those as well. I like the Mimics. Mimics are pretty quick. I don't like Overseers because this matchup is not really about grinding. So maybe we do something like this. No, I mean it. Yes, claims do kill Nexus, but I'm more concerned about Spell's Guide than Nexus. Amulet is the new shadow. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> so we have a Ravager and we have a we have a Ballista. Seems good. Would be nice to have something to do on turn one. We were never lucky, so. Guess I'm gonna play the forest. Allows me to hold up claim. My opponent does play Skite. You got me, OP. I go down to 19. Ha. <sighs> I think I'm just going to play the Opal and just pass the turn. Like, if my opponent wants to play... If they want to play this waiting game, I'm probably... I'm probably into it. Next turn, I can play Ravager plus Ballista. Or maybe even just... I guess I can't play Ballista for two, unfortunately. Rancor. Okay. Okay. We steer first. Into a Ravager. Play Ravager and pass. I could have played the Ballista, but we get got by a Nature's Flame. Which my opponent probably has, and it's kind of hilarious. They force a Vigor, my thing. I think I'm fine with this. I could claim my own thing if I wanted to. I think I just let it go. Hey, it doesn't matter. How you doing? So glue in a row. Alright. 
Now I'm actually going to do some stuff. That's that's actually a pretty solid draw right there. <clears throat> no need to do anything here. I'm gonna sack the Ravager to itself here. My opponent will need to have double Nature Slay. If they do, that's fine. Okay, sweet. So we saved we saved life. Now I'm gonna ping the hierarchy of my opponent's sense step. Uh, yeah, region. <laughs> Sweet. All right, so they have a Rancor in hand, and I am going to... I can just... Well, I kind of want to get the Recombiner going, so let's do that. So I'm going to attack... And I'm gonna ping this right now. After damage, ping. Pony has nothing. We are still holding up Nature's Claim. We can start spitting out walking ballistas every turn. The pony can't win anymore. Easy. Mm -mm -mm. Any chances to try blue red balance or is it too not conventional? Eh, I mean. I, I could try it. I would definitely do it for like donation uh, for a donation league, hundred percent. Um, it's just it's not like it's not a deck that I would naturally gravitate towards. Let's put it that way. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm certainly okay to play basically any deck. Like I, I've I've played like the Jeskai Ascendancy combo with uh, Ascendi no, something Ascendicon, Wind Sandicon. What was the name of that? Well, I remember the name of the deck was Jeskai Ascendicon, which was a cute name. Uh, this hand looks super awkward. The mulligan. This one looks kind of nice, actually. So I think I'm going to bottom the hanger back. And we can... Turn one modulated, probably against Verdict Catacomb deck. I I am very interested in this card. Pokison. I I don't I don't know what my opponent's hand is like. So I like I don't know whether they play it wrong or not. Like I'm I'm not an Infect player either. So uh, that's that's kind of annoying, but it's not so bad at the same time. So now they're probably gonna. Take the hanger back, and then we just grind them out with the animation module. Oh, another discard spell, I guess. Why would they not take the two for one? All right, Lano are reborn. Make it one one. Not gonna graft. And next turn we can play hanger back. Make it one one. And we start we we'll start grinding them out with animation module. 
Let's see, Goif. All right, so we're just playing against, against Jund. Uh, that's good. We're now going to graph to this, but we are going to graph to this one. Hunger Galak is basically the best thing to graft on. It's great. Now we get a bunch of 1-1s. One you streamed... You streamed Elves, Dido. I don't believe you. I don't believe that you streamed Elf. I, I don't. I literally don't. Don't. Don't believe that you streamed Elf. And I also don't believe that you are that you stream Neo. That are you going to stream Neo for tomorrow? Like I. I literally don't. Don't trust you. <laughs> I know. I know. I literally don't believe that you can play anything that is not Death Shadow. I think if you told me, if you told me that you played John Shadow, I would really doubt it, but I would probably believe you. I mean, here you're not playing. I'm like, yeah, but yeah, I don't know. Like, I do feel like Harold and Scales is like kind of in my wheelhouse. Like it is, it is certainly the style of deck that I enjoy to play. So there's that. Noise. That's a really, really, really good draw. Like if they were gonna bolt me, then they should have definitely done it before damage they missed one point of damage for no reason now you gotta kill this one bro <laughs> you really want to kill this one <laughs> just guy shadow <laughs> i would i would love to see a just guy shadow stream <laughs> i would love to see a just guy shadow stream that would be that would be, how can I say it? Inimaginable. <laughs> Inimaginable. Just check your color, nice blue black elves. <laughs> Just guy with four shadow load out. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I mean, it's technically Just Guy Shadow, right? <laughs> Metamorphose times four. K command. Okay. Like my opponent really needed that. This animation module was doing so much work. So three, four, five, six, seven. Let's take five there. Steering seems to something good. What do we got? A Ravager? Another animation module? Well, we don't have anything to get the animation going, the, the module going now. So I think I'm gonna go with Ravager here. I'm gonna play the Opal. Like, my opponent could technically double bolt me, so I guess I'm gonna leave in a 1 1 to chump. Swing for 5 here. I don't have lethal, right? No, I, I definitely don't. So we serve 6 there and just pass the turn. End step, I'm gonna crack the peat land. We can grow the Ravager. 
Uh, no, it, it only gets itself going if there's a one one a, a, something with a one one counter on, and the second that my opponent kills this thopter, then I have nothing going on. So I I'm pretty sure that um, <clears throat> that module is not the line. Pretty sure that uh, getting Ravager there is correct. I was actually pretty lucky my opponent did not draw a Renan 6. That would have been annoying. Blood Raid. Spin the wheel. <laughs> Got him. Alright, so now I actually have lethal. Yeah, now I actually do have lethal. I just put all the counters on the Thopter and they just die. That was funny. Uh, Veils, thank you very much. Karns, thank you very much. Uh, so we basically... Take out the X ones that leave no value behind. And I do like the welding jar. Animation module is just the nuts. Maybe one Mox Opal is what we. I mean, to be fair, what was like the worst case scenario would have been. Um... Worst case scenario is a K command, and I still beat a K command very easily there. Like K uh, blood rain into K command. I mean, the worst case scenario would be like K command into push or something like that. That would have that would have been actually problematic. But what do you think about this Samuel versus Simic versus matchup? I literally made an entire video that I'm about to release for my Patreons, which you can see right here. See, it's like 23 minutes and 50 seconds of me talking about specifically the Amulet versus Wursa matchup. Um, but yeah, that's going to be for my for my Patreon. So I'm about to launch my Patreon, hopefully this weekend. I thought I was going to do it last weekend. I couldn't. So I'm going to I'm aiming for this weekend. Um, I, we actually got. Uh, oh, yeah. Let, let, me let me show you this to you guys real quick. We actually have some. Um, you see? You have some sweet, sweet thumbnails for them. This is one of the, the Amulet Deep Dives thumbnails. Then it's going to be this one, Titan versus Wursa. Pretty sweet. And then the last one, for now, is going to be Titan versus Grixis Shadow. These are the three videos that I've worked on that I'm going to release from my Patreons. And, um, yeah, I'm going to put them together this weekend. And, yeah. In short, I think it's good but extremely tricky. Uh, that's that's like the the short, the short version of it. Look at this hand. Turn one veil of summer. I mean, I'm I'm snapping this off, right? Second Moxopol is kind of a blank, but that's fine. Just save me twenty six minutes. <laughs> And this is why I don't have any patrons, right? Because I just I just gave away all the information. <laughs> just gave away all the info. Wow, turn two Karn sign of Ursa with Veil of Summer backup. Sign me up. That's freaking hot. Hot, 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 hot. I think I'd rather play it slow, I think. So I'm going to steerings here. Because one thing that I um, that I want to pay attention to is the fact that... Yeesh. Um... Okay, so I'm gonna find the peatland here. I'm gonna play the peatland. Uh, one one thing that I that it's important is if my opponent decays my opal end step, then if even if I welding jar it, it's gonna become tapped. So I am not gonna be able to hold up bail for that turn, which is bad. 
Where's the video in Emily versus Jess Guy Shadow? Well, I'm going to start like uh, uploading them regularly, right? That's that's the idea. So, Ren and Tix. Okay. I did this wrong. I should have held up the neutral and pit land. Yeah, that was bad. I took damage for no reason. So we keep this one. We'll play Karn Sign of Ursa. And I'm going to plus this. I don't really care about the... the. Uh, I guess that it stops it. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to minus. This clocks the rain and also blocks the tree top very effectively. Now the Karn can get bolted, which is kind of an issue, but that's, that's fine, I guess. Got him. Dope. Definitely worth pushing there because it protects the the Karn from the Street of Village. Very effectively. Veil is just absurd. <laughs> this card is so dumb. <laughs> Heard Karn and thought you were playing a real deck. I mean, this is probably one of the realer Karn decks. Top three realer Karn decks, I guess. It's probably a Lily. Two damage. Okay, so we're just gonna regen this. And then my opponent's gonna be able to minus and kill the Karn. Yep. Oof, that's actually kind of nice. So scales, worker, worker. And I think I'm going to cycle Peatland instead of attacking for one with the Ink Moth. Like, since the attack is not lethal, there's kind of not much value in me going for it, so... Bye bye, Ren. Like, I think I'd rather have an extra card in my hand than my opponent having one poison counter that's pretty relevant. I mean, it's really hard to say that your opponent is playing badly when you don't know their hand. Like, that is... Basically, that's all that matters. Like, if, if that's what my opponent's hand was dictating, they kind of have to do what they are doing. So, without knowing their hand, we can't really say whether they are playing properly or not. So, I don't like... I don't like, um, you know, saying that my opponents are, are not playing properly when I don't know the contents of their, of their hand. I'm very happy with how, with how I played. Like I would have, I would, could have played the card on turn two, but I would have let it, left it um, fragile for the treetop. And because of how I sequence my cards and stuff, I was able to actually, um, I was able to uh, to end up in a much better position. Could I say command to my upkeep? Then I couldn't attack. Yeah, that's fair. 
but I was tapped out otherwise, right? So if, if they do that and I have another Veil, they literally just lose the game on the spot. So, you know, same thing. Poggers. Um, do I even care about these Renan ticks? I feel like I do, but I'm going to attack them with this and I'm going to attack the Renan ticks here. Oh, I should have played the Hungry Rock first. That was that was a mistake on my part. I should have definitely played the Hungry Rock first. I guess I, I can just put the counters, like whatever they kill here. I put the counters on the other thing. Okay, so they decay there. Ticks die. And I play my Hunger back for two. Three counters. Now my opponent is to kill this. Then I get Thopters. They're in trouble. Oh, you never heard about Renan ticks? I mean, it's, it's like a hundred ticks. So it's like the most, <laughs> the most proper way of calling this card. Plague Engineer, probably naming Construct. <clears throat> Maybe Thopter? So they can cleanly answer Blink Moth is what they name. Huh. I was not expecting that one. Out of all the things, I guess that my opponent does not want to die to Ravager off the top. Okay. Uh, so I guess I'm going to hold this forest in hand because we're not going to use it. And... We're not going to use it, I'd rather play around like Kickman making me discard. Uh, I think I activate this now, actually. Yeah. I'm not gonna get to lock the Goyf. But this guarantees a bunch of Thopters. Next turn, I'm gonna start holding back to block. But I can take 5 from the Goyf pretty comfortably here, I think. Or ticks. Casually drawing t triple rend. No big deal. Ley line of the void. That is actually kind of a big deal. That is a really big deal. So now I need to win through a ley line. It's not a bad draw, by the way. But now I actually chill back to block. So now modular doesn't work anymore. Nice. Got him.
holding forest in hand for value. My opponent discarded the land for no reason. I mean, it, I guess it doesn't really matter. Yeah, they like kind of a big deal here. My opponent has no cards in hand, though. So if I draw the list, uh, when I answer this, we are kind of in a great spot. Or I can draw that one. That one's also pretty good. Um, Is that a good draw? I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether this one was a good draw or not. <clears throat> All right, so they get back the catacombs. They play the catacombs. Oh, we get to untap with Karn. Whew. <laughs> Find a ballista. All right. Play welding jar. Oh, we, I forgot to activate hanger back, which is so far ahead. I didn't really care. Totally, totally blank there. My bad. That's definitely a punt on my side. This ballista should be a 9-9. Nine, nine. Doesn't look like it's going to matter much. So if I attack with both, what happens? My opponent needs to trade. Any of these trades is good for me. Because even if the engineer dies, then this unlocks my ink mods so I can start attacking. <clears throat> okay. That seems that seemed worth doing. All right. Now we untap, and if we do untap, we win. I'm probably going to block the Tarmogoyf with the Sync Moth Nexus. Except they don't attack. Okay. Another inky. One, two, three. Gonna get the ballista here. Yeah, point just concedes. Then we're gonna we were gonna attack with both. One of them was going to get through and the Ballista cleans, cleans up after that. Four and one. Not bad at all for a first league with the deck. Uh, certainly felt powerful. And this deck is so much fun. I'm a big, big fan of scales. Uh, I think I'm going to take it for another spin. So if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you hit that uh, follow button. And you subscribe, you like, all that, all that, all that good stuff, you know. And see you on the second league. Bye bye.